With all of the news and rumors that have been coming out left and right regarding the Los Angeles Lakers, I can already tell that it's going to be another one of those off seasons. Meaning, if you're a Lakers fan, you should prepare yourself if you haven't already done so. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications because I'm going to be keeping you guys entertained and up to date while trying to make sense of all this madness that comes with both LeBron James and Rob Palenka. But before we go any further, today's content is brought to you guys by Underdog. Right now, Underdog Fantasy is running the promo of all promos. From now until June 2nd, anytime you make a full WNBA entry that includes a player with a flame emoji behind them in the player card, that entry will receive a boosted payout if that entry hits. That's right, not only are Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark going to be out there scoring buckets and grabbing boards, but they're also going to be increasing your potential payout. Between these amazing promos and the NBA playoffs, I've been having a ton of fun with the easiest and best way to play fantasy sports, and you can too. All you have to do is click the link in the description or download the app. When you sign up, you're going to want to use code COOP, because when you use code COOP, you're going to get the chance to earn up to $250 in bonus cash on your first deposit. Using code COOP also just happens to be a great way to support my content. So yeah, check it out guys, and thank you Underdog for the sponsor. This season, LeBron James continued to defy the odds. At 39 years old, he put together a 25.7 point, 7.3 rebound, and 8.3 assist campaign while shooting 54% from the floor. And the Los Angeles Lakers would waste it, falling to the Denver Nuggets in five games in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Although there's nothing wrong with losing to the Denver Nuggets, the way that the Lakers lost to the Nuggets left a terrible taste in my mouth. There were multiple instances where the Lakers would gain this nice lead on the Nuggets and then just fall apart out of nowhere. When the Lakers blew that 20 point lead in game 2, and then Jamal Murray hit that heavily contested buzzer beater to stun the Lakers, I knew that the series was over with. When you're playing the MVP in Nikola Jokic and a team that's as good as the Denver Nuggets, as Austin Reeves said, you have to play nearly perfect basketball and the Lakers didn't. There were some reports out there that the Lakers falling to the Nuggets in round one wouldn't get Ham fired, but ultimately the writing was on the wall. The players didn't respect Ham and Ham was nowhere near as good of a coach that he needed to be to overcome something like that. Just look at how mad that LeBron James was here after Ham failed to challenge this play. To add insult to injury here, the Nuggets scored a basket not even 10 seconds later. I'm surprised that LeGM didn't get this man fired mid-game and was nice enough to let him finish the series out. So I'm sitting here saying all of this like it was all LeBron that got him fired, when the reality of the matter is there was more than enough blame to go around for Ham's firing. According to reports, the man who called out Ham mid-series would also play a major role in his firing. For those who forgot already, Anthony Davis called out Ham mid-series saying that the Lakers had no idea what they were doing as a team on the basketball floor. Ham responded to this claim from Anthony Davis publicly saying that he would simply agree to disagree, don't get me wrong. This was a big deal at the time, but it turned out to be bigger than I ever thought it would have been. The team would view Ham's response as an unnecessary amplification of tensions from Ham's side. With the rest of the team already frustrated with Ham and Anthony Davis specifically being frustrated, the Lakers felt like they had to make a decision here before disaster happened yet again. Sam Emick says that when they chose to fire Darvin Ham, he was told that one of many considerations was that it was pretty evident that AD was not on board with Darvin Ham anymore, and they know, like everybody else, that AD has a history of having asked for trades in the past. That's how he got to the Lakers from New Orleans. Last thing that they wanted was for AD to be frustrated with the situation and maybe have those types of thoughts cross his mind again. So with Ham getting fired, the Lakers would add yet another major task to their offseason to-do list. This would be a task that you think that LeBron James would be involved with given his current leverage and the fact that he's probably returning to Los Angeles, but so far, Shams has said that LeBron James has not been involved in the Lakers head coaching search. Now, not only has LeBron James not been involved, but he's made it abundantly clear that whatever the Lakers decide, that's going to be their decision and not mine. 
LeBron really said, nope, some of you blame Darvin Ham on me, some of you blame the Westbrook trade on me, but what you're not going to do is blame this next coaching hire on me because I am having nothing to do with it. At least, that's what the reports are saying. With the Lakers coaching search well underway, they've already started to zero in on a handful of candidates. With one of the main candidates ironically being the man that LeBron James recently decided to start a podcast with. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Mind the Game podcast, it features none other than LeBron James and possible future Lakers head coach, JJ Redick. It's a weird coincidence that JJ Redick and Braun recently launched this podcast and now all of a sudden we're hearing things like the Lakers are infatuated with JJ Redick's short-term potential. Mind you that this guy has not coached a game of basketball at the professional level yet. To me, him being linked to the Lakers after starting a podcast with Braun seems like much more than some weird coincidence. To me, him being linked to the Lakers after starting this podcast it's like going to a seafood restaurant and then a po' boy magically appearing on your plate or going to salt grass and then all of a sudden there's a nice juicy steak on your plate sitting in front of you shortly after you order. Like what? No way. What are the odds that something like this would happen? What a weird coincidence that this all is. It's like, yeah, none of this is a coincidence. This is sort of what we expected to happen. So The Athletic says that not only are the Lakers infatuated in JJ's short-term potential, but they also really believe in his long-term potential, presumably believing that he's a Pat Riley-like coaching prospect who could lead the franchise for years. Again, Redick has had no experience coaching at the NBA level. That's no knock on Redick, who from watching a lot of episodes of his podcast has a solid basketball mind. But when you're expecting this guy to be Pat Riley out of the gates, you're sort of setting him up for failure especially when your current roster is as it's constructed. I think that some rare success stories have some people underestimating how hard that it can be to step into a head coaching role after having no prior coaching experience. If LeBron comes back, then the Lakers are going to be a win now team. And as great of a basketball mind that Redick is, he's undoubtedly going to have some growing pains as a first time head coach and he's going to have to learn a lot on the fly. These are things that might not sit well with a team that's looking to win now. Even Pat Riley was an assistant coach for a couple of seasons before he ultimately stepped in and won his first championship with the Lakers in his first season as a head coach. If the Lakers were to hire Redick, there's just this giant fear for me that it'd end up being like the Nets hiring Steve Nash. Sure, the Nets had a decent run at things, but the whole time they were on that run, it felt like that run was held together by strings. Nash was hired because he was supposed to be this high IQ basketball genius who was going to have a good relationship with the team's stars, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. But upon getting hired, all the Nets stars did was take advantage of the relationship that they had with him, undermining him from the very beginning. These guys were really campaigning for a wash DeAndre Jordan's renaissance and saying things like, I don't really see us having a head coach. As I'm saying all of this, it's important to note and emphasize that I actually like JJ Redick as a coaching prospect relative to what's out there. I really just think that he'd be walking into a very tough situation for a first time coach. That situation becomes infinitely harder to walk into if you don't see what AD brings to the table defensively. JJ would actually not vote for Anthony Davis to make either of the all defensive teams. AD being the beast that he is would still be all defense and all NBA but that doesn't change the fact that this isn't the good look for JJ Redick. Now, as Woj has noted, there isn't a star coach out there at this time, which means that the Lakers might just take their time with this search. So here are some candidates that the Lakers have been linked to outside of JJ Redick. David Adelman, Sam Cassell, Micah Nori, James Borrego, and Chris Quinn. I've also seen that they won't hire a coach until they know for certain that Ty Lue won't be available, so there's that also. Guys, if you were the Lakers, who would you be be looking to hire as your head coach. Now as I said earlier, who the Lakers hire at head coach might not even matter unless we see some big changes occur to this team's roster. The Lakers are just getting older while the rest of the league continues to get better. But certainly that's going to change, right? Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Get Like Coop, bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.